What's going on guys? Hexa here with another episode of Skull the Hero Slayer and uh, in this one we actually have a bit of a special episode because this is going to be my first challenge run on the channel which is a uh, little like uh, restrictions that I give myself in a run to make it a little bit harder a little more interesting uh, and in this one we're actually doing our first challenge run that was suggested by a viewer of the channel. Uh, thank you for that suggestion I'll show it on the screen here. Uh, just to get a little bit into what that entails for the run. Uh, in this uh, challenge run in particular, we are going to be taking the first skull that we're offered from the uh, skull NPC. And we're going to be taking the first item that we're offered from the ogre NPC. And whatever inscriptions these have on them, we have to build our run towards. And we have to stick to whatever this uh, this uh, gives us out of this uh, skull reward. So very limited run options. Uh, that's the goal of this run. Uh, I've already tried recording one of these. They're very, 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 very hard. Um, you have to get pretty lucky with the inscriptions here. I got a freeze run. I got the, the uh, abandoned wedded ring on my first attempt and it was horrible. <laughs> so let's go ahead and see what he gives me. And oh my God, really? Uh, <laughs> uh Okay. <laughs> That's a good start, and this is uh, also a good start. This is perfectly doable, actually. Uh, I'm a big fan of this. This is very doable. If you get a rare from the uh, NPC, it's like, okay, who cares? This was, well, this would have also been doable, actually. A relic run would have been perfectly doable. Uh, but we got the invisible knife. Uh, so our only inscriptions we can build towards for the whole run are hidden blade and misfortune. That's literally it. And the only skull we can use, uh, other than Lil Bone, because I'm still going to be swapping, uh, the, I think it's still going to be necessary to uh, be allowed to be able to at least use swaps. Though it will be Lil Bone swaps, so, you know, n nothing to write home about. But, um, yeah, uh, Hidden Blade and uh, Misfortune, which means high crit rate, low damage. But the uh, the Invisible Knife is, a, is like a, a, a force to be reckoned with with its damage just in and of itself. Even though we're on a physical run here, like, I'm sure uh, people are going to be saying, like, you know, it is a, a physical run. Uh, how are you going to make the best use out of it? And also, you're a bleed skull, so, you know, that's also bad. But, like, this is just, like, the way I'm looking at this right now is we're going to have multiple sources of damage that are going to be contributing to our overall success of this, um, of this build. We got extremely lucky getting that invisible knife, uh... However, I will say that this challenge is brutal. It's brutal, dude, because you can get just profoundly unlucky, like I talked about. Abandoned Wedding Ring, which only has Heirloom and Absolute Zero on it. And, you know, that is uh, very, very hard to build around. So, on this attempt, I'm very happy to uh, be getting the Invisible Knife to start us out. And also getting the Misty Valley NPC here. If she gives me Magic Attack boost, that would be excellent. So please, please give me that. And that's actually just as good. <laughs> really, at the end of the day, that's a significant uh, cre crit increase. Now we're every fourth attack, basically, we're dealing a crit, which is very uh, important for the uh, use of Invisible Knife. Obviously, as we get Hidden Blade, it'll change things up a little bit, but still, it's still very important to have... Um, <clears throat> naturally high crit rate after your invisible blade wears off or hidden blade i mean my bad <clears throat> they are very uh, close together in how they're named though so can't blame me too hard for that it's like an innocent mistake but yeah man i'm much 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 like the vibes are good for this uh, attempt of this whereas the vibes for the last run i was recording were bad dude those were bad vibes i actually stopped recording it just because i was like man this this kind of sucks like this is this isn't fun at all this just kind of blows so yeah this attempt is very high this uh challenge i mean is very high rolly and you uh okay so we can't take that we can't take that like I said, this is going to be, it's still going to be hard because we, uh, we can't take this either because excessive bleeding activates on one. So we can only have the, the inscriptions that we got at the beginning active. So we can't have this active. So we can't take this, even though it has hidden blade on it. It's one of the only uh, items we can't take, but we can take this. Actually, we can perfectly take this. Oh my God. This is beautiful. What is, what is happening? Uh, 
like two of my favorite items have exactly the the exact inscriptions that I want them to have. That is, I didn't, I never noticed that. And we actually could take this too if we could afford it, but we can't. And there's nothing out. I'm of these two. I'm not willing to sell anything to get the rake. Though this is definitely on the uh, on the list of items I'm very interested in getting eventually. Uh, that that'll be good. Though I guess it's bad against bosses, but yeah. We're going to be slaying the beginning of this game, though. This this is basically a normal run that I'm on right now. For now. Uh, eventually, it's going to fall off pretty hard as we continue going along. But like I said, yeah, this is uh, not my first attempt at this. Uh, the, the first attempt, the vibes were off and they were bad. They were not immaculate. Um, yeah, I, I was not uh, feeling that run at all. So this run, okay, we got, we got the Ninja Boy glitch. Uh... He sometimes can teleport way off the screen, and there, like you just kind of hear him running around, jumping off screen. There's nothing you can do about it. Uh, one thing that's going to come heavy into this uh, run is quints. Like we're going to be making a very high use of our quints, but not kobold. Uh, kobold is just uh, too low damage to make use of off of a a run where we're not going to be building towards our damage at all. It's going to be all about crits and crit effects. So, sadly, there's nothing we can do to really make use of that. Uh, we already got the Misty Valley NPC, so no, like, hidden stat increases are going to be happening this run. What we get with our stats are pretty much this. Like, I, I don't think there's any way... Any hidden blade items that have raw stats attached to them, maybe Blood Drunk Sword? No, because we can't take that, because it has excessive bleeding on it. So... I, we might not even be able to get nine items. That's how weird this run is going to be. We have actually no, no, no. We can get nine items thanks to the um, the thieves armor and the invisible knife having the exact same inscriptions on them. But any other run, you might not be able to get uh, nine items. It's because we got a rare at the start that had matching inscriptions with another rare that we were able to get nine items. On the Absolute Zero Heritage run, I I'm fairly certain there was no way for me to actually get 9 items. Because no uh, no item has those overlapping inscriptions attached to them. So you have to get really lucky on this, uh, on this challenge run, like I did at the start, to stand a chance at really breaking the run. Or not really breaking the run, but like uh, having a easy time. This is actually good. We can make use. Okay, actually, that's this is one of the uh, quints I was going to be looking for heavily. Is this right here? And especially since we got this now, we have two balance skulls that we can swap in and out of. So this is perfect. Uh, misfortune. Obviously, we can't take it. So here's the thing, right? If a if an item has an inscription on it, you're not building towards. You can only take one a copy that has that inscription. Like if we find another. Uh, hidden blade like if we find another misfortune dual item or a hidden blade dual item we can't take the other one and keep this one so we'll have to choose between them that's how this is going to work if you're curious but uh i'm very happy to see this king dwarf here this is one of the items i was heavily going to be looking for we're going to farm this like crazy i might speed things up if it gets too uh tedious but um uh, maybe i won't farm it too super hard because we're pretty strong right now uh, we don't need to rely on it as much, uh, but uh, having this it to help us deal with damage as we go is just going to be so useful, even though it's not going to have a high damage number attached to it. It's still going to be really, really uh, handy to have. Thankfully, we got a balance skull at the start, so we can make use of uh, this item we got here, the uh, Spear of Sniping, which is an item I've been wanting to bring for, along for a run for a very long time but just never found an opportunity to do it. But this is perfect for it, really. What is our crit at 40%? That's so good for uh, <laughs> Act 1. Not even out not even out of Act 1, and we already have uh, almost uh, every hit we, every other hit we do is a crit, which is pretty crazy. Also, we're finding a lot of really good NPCs too. The vibes on this run are absolutely, I'm all for them right now, dude. Like I said, in the last one, I was not feeling it. Sadly, we cannot take this. We got it once again. Uh, statuses are a bit of a pain in the ass sometimes when it comes to that kind of thing. Dude, I'm telling you right now that getting King Dwarf is such a boon for this run. 
Uh, a lot of people, for some reason, are under the impression that King Dwarf isn't good. Uh, on a non-high damage run, it might not be super good, but the thing is, uh, what else would we take over it, right? Uh, I guess Troll, maybe? Troll would be okay. Orc would be okay, I guess. But the thing is, if you're ampli if you're doubling low damage amounts, and you're taking the extra damage attacked on, like attached to uh, picking up Orc, is Orc even good at that point? I'm not sure. Because to make Orc good, you need to amplify your damage to such a degree that, like, the downside attached to it is meaningless. But we're not going to be able to do that if we take it. So I, I'm not convinced that Orc would be the right match for this build. Maybe Troll. We'll have to see how King Dwarf uh, performs the later we get into the run. But yeah, easy Yggdrasil. The the absolute zero heritage Yggdrasil fight was a nightmare. So I'm I'm absolutely feeling this run right now. This would have been nice on that run, but uh, actually no, it wouldn't have because we didn't have a way to activate our tackle dashes. No, yeah, we did because we could. No, wait, no, we couldn't. Never mind. I keep going back and forth. Uh, for some reason, I thought Cavalry Decoration would have done it, but no, Cavalry Decoration, for some reason, does not uh, activate item effects. Like, I've said I've grown a lot more uh, respect for that item, and that still remains true, but I still don't get why that item does not do that. I feel like that would be such a uh, a perfect uh, use of that, of an item like that, to activate uh, tackle, or like dash damage item effects on skulls that normally would have no way to do that. Just seems like a great reason for an item like that to exist. Uh, our, we're, it's really slow going with this dwarf quintessence, but like I said, thankfully we're pretty strong regardless. So we don't have to uh, rely on it as much as we would otherwise on like a uh, a run that didn't get profoundly lucky with its starter item. Especially for, for the uh, starter item to have the same inscriptions as uh, Thieves Armor. Like, that is... Uh, Maybe <laughs> the the pinnacle of high rolling for this challenge in particular. I can't think of anything better because these are two incredible items that are going to going to be useful to me for the entire game, and they each have the exact same inscriptions on them. I, I like I said, I can't think of much better than that, and it's it's a rare too, so the odds of actually seeing it are just so low. I, you know what, actually. Would this even no? Because Fulgent Dawn wouldn't be usable either, because it eventually turns into two different inscriptions. That uh, how would that even work actually? If you get Sun and Moon at the start, how do you actually use that on this challenge run? Do you just like build it towards artifact and and arms? Because that seems like the most bo that's not even a challenger, and that's just like a run. <laughs> There's nothing challenging about that. I don't know. That's a question for another day, I suppose. Who, if anyone else attempts this and gets that on their run, let me know how you decided to go with it. Uh, that has duel on it. I. That's basically the uh, physical equivalent of this, but I think the sphere of sniping is better for us than this. So we can't take both of them. We'll keep this. This has strike on it. We can't take it. This is not, none of these are takeable. What do we have here? 890. And I'm not willing to sell any of this. So we'll just counter losses. We're not going to take Medusa because we have Dwarf, which is obviously weaker for now, but we're going to build it to be very strong, obviously. You know, there's a lot of haters in the community for Dwarf. Uh, Y'all need to reconsider your opinion on Dwarf. It's a very good contestants, uh, especially on normal runs. Uh, on this run, it's not going to be good for a while, but it's still a very, very good quintessence. You just need to open your mind about how you view uh, damage quintessences and like stat increase quintessences. Stat boosting quintessences aren't the only good ones. Uh, there's pretty much every uh, quintessence is good in one way or another, or at least usable. There's very few actually bad quintessences. What's that one? Um, nether mana something. It's like gate to the nether or something like that. I don't know. It's a really weird one. It's like... Uh, that's one of the bad ones. Um, Nias's flower, ice flowers is kind of bad. Or I'm probably saying that wrong. I don't actually know how to pronounce her uh, her name. What's going on with this fucking AI? Do they not recognize that I'm here? What the hell? 
That was uh, really weird. <laughs> he was just walking into the corner there and he wasn't even acknowledging that I was on the screen. I've never seen that. Maybe it's a glitch. Or maybe it's because uh, I wasn't attacking them, but I was attacking them with King Dwarf. I, I really don't know. Also, it's really unfortunate that King Dwarf is so far away here. I, I shouldn't be farming this hard, actually. I'm going to uh, move a little faster than this. Uh, this is just not good for viewers. But uh, this is how meticulous I normally am with my King Dwarf farming. But I won't do that to you guys. Because, uh, like I said, it's, it's just not fun for people to watch me sit there and farm King Dwarf like crazy. But we're still going to farm it. We're just not going to farm it like crazy. Also, I really need to get this NPC up here. Or I'm at the shrine, actually. I, I don't know why I call it an NPC. Uh, I think the adventure fight's probably coming up next. But uh, So the last video I tried, the Absolute Zero Heritage attempt, or heirloom, I mean, did it made it past the adventures, but I quit pretty quickly after that because, like I said, I wasn't feeling the vibes. But um, this run, I'm... I'm Taking it the distance, uh, obviously. Like, I have to capitalize on this luck we've been given here. Though, as lucky as this run is, I still don't think this is going to be easy by any stretch. This is just a hard challenge. And, and like I said, this is a absolute just peak high roll. And even then, we're going to be struggling, especially the further we get into the run. So, just a really cool idea from the uh, person who suggested it. Thank you once again for uh, contributing to the channel like that. I do appreciate it. It makes it much easier for me because I can't come up with everything. Uh, I did come up with one challenge run idea where we take the first three items in every shop or we the only items we can take are the uh, items offered, the first three items on the pedestal in every shop we go into. There's Orc, I'm not taking it. I can take this actually. Yeah, actually we will take that. Uh, though we aren't really necessarily relying on our raw crit damage. We're relying on item effects attached to our crit damage, but I still think that's worth taking. But we can't take any more strike inscription, so I have to keep that in mind as we continue moving. But I still think having uh, raw damage attached to our inscriptions is going to be useful. Or I mean our uh, our basics. Don't know why I keep uh, miswording things. It is, I'm doing this very uh, early in the morning for me. So uh, I'm up <laughs> recording way uh, earlier than normal because I wasn't able to record yesterday. So I guess my uh, my rhythm's a little bit off, but it's fine. Uh, we're still doing pretty good on this run, and uh, I'm 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 enjoying this a lot more than I was the uh, the first attempt. So I think that's what really matters is to just make sure I always have fun while we're doing these videos. And I am having fun. This is a really cool idea for a uh, wait. Where's that coming from? What is that? Oh, that must be misfortune. Four. What does that do again? Or, uh, yeah, Misfortune 4. Turn all attacks into critical hits for 7 seconds. That's pretty good, actually. We're probably going to be relying on that pretty heavily. Uh, also, we want Hidden Blade. It's like, one of the highest uh, priorities is getting that up to 4-2. Because uh, we just we need to have constant proccing of our Invisible Knife to uh, really get our damage going on this run. That's going to be... Because uh, I'm pretty sure we can't take... Um, gunpowder sword. I think it has brawl and arms attached to it, so that's not a takeable item on this build. Invisible knife is going to be doing some heavy, heavy, heavy lifting. And okay, we got we got King Dwarf, so we don't even have to farm anymore. We just place it down and let it go. Which, if you've never seen it work, uh, King Dwarf is ex it just. I mean, we're going to be seeing it this entire run most likely. So, hopefully, I'm not offered. Uh, okay, that has dual on it, so we can't take it sadly. So let's say hopefully I'm not offered um, troll because then I would have to make a decision early on. I want to see how King Dwarf functions before I have to make that decision. God, th would this even be good? I don't think so. It's too hard. It's too hard of a condition to me. I've never liked to this effect where like damage behind X enemy is stronger. Never been a fan of that personally. It just it's too niche. That's not useful. Um, this has Hidden Blade on it, and it has Arson on it. That's... Okay, we can take it then. <laughs> I got excited for a second. That sucks. <laughs> that would actually be... In oh, wait, here we go. This is what one of the items I wanted. And we don't have Execute, so... Yeah, we'll take it. Even though... Um, 
I... Uh, it's going to be bad against bosses, the only downside to that item. Because uh, we can't kill enemies while fighting bosses, or at least most of them. Uh, eh, actually, there's only a couple bosses that don't actually have enemies against them. Like the first hero, but obviously that's one <laughs> that's going to be pretty bad. Uh, so... Joan, all phases of Joan have enemies that you can kill to make my attack speed higher, but it's like not really uh, reliable against her because you have to, you have to wait till she summons her little dudes to uh, to do that. And those things, most of the time, I just ignore their existence. I don't know about you guys, how you guys fight Joan, but I usually just ignore the existence of her little peons and go for her instead of them because they don't really affect the fight all that much they very rarely actually uh, screw me over in a way that's like important and uh yeah we're gonna get our legendary very early in this run which is a good thing because we only have to build towards one skull and then we can, can completely entirely focus on building towards our uh inscriptions and items though uh, we're pretty much... It's it's going to be hard to get more powerful than we are. There's not a lot of... Uh, like, we already high-rolled the two best items we could get. So, where can we go from there? God, our damage is going to be so bad, dude. It's going to get so painful. Especially because we can't take... Um, uh, What's it called? Uh, Gunpowder Sword. We can take Explosive Arrow, though. Yeah, and I'll probably definitely take that. Because uh, it does have Misfortune on it. I think it also has Duel on it, maybe. So we'd have to get rid of the Sphere of Sniping. That would actually be pretty bad. That's going to be a... I hope I don't have to make that decision, to be completely honest with you. That would be uh, not easy. Also, yeah, here's uh, something I, I've been wanting to talk about. And I think I have talked about it in previous videos, but it's been a while. Uh, if you're a new player struggling against the Leona Sisters, King Dwarf is a contestant you should absolutely take a look at. Because uh, it deals a lot of damage to them and allows you to completely focus on dodging their attacks so you don't have to si do both simultaneously. In my opinion, it's one of the best um, ways to actually fight these two if you're uh, struggling with their attack patterns especially. But as you can see here, we are not uh, dealing a lot of damage to them. So our damage is already starting to come into a bit of uh, issues here. But I don't think it matters. Uh, Right now, we still have time to power up. Uh, which, if only there was a way that I could actually um, get da like raw damage. Coward's long, or what's that one item? Like it's like something coward's longbow or something like that. Uh, that amplifies the damage of projectiles could be good. That could be useful. I don't. I think it works with uh, the turret here. Maybe. I hope. It is a quintessence. Quintessence damage is really weird. I don't know if it's modified by uh, a lot of things. I know it's modified by raw stats, but I don't know about what else. We can't take that. <laughs> That's so sad, dude. Gold main rapier, and we can't take it. God, I'm destroying a gold. That that was painful. Destroying a gold main rapier is probably one of the most painful things I've done in Skull the Hero Slayer. Uh, without using it at least a little bit first. God. That is an item I love to pick up, but we don't have spoils. Also, spoils is another inscription that you can roll on these runs. So, like I said, man, we got really lucky with our starter uh, items here. Like, there's just so many uh, bad uh, items and inscriptions that you can roll. But I think I, I might have already low rolled with the, uh, the abandoned wedding ring. That might be the pinnacle low roll. Actually, no, 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 because there's, um... Oh, uh, no, because this... Okay, so you have to think about it from the inscription standpoint, too, or, or the items that come with it, too. So I was thinking maybe that Dark Court Shard, the Purified Dark Court Shard or whatever. But that thing has, like, Antique on it, I think. And that means you can have Hand of Glory. Which Hand of Glory, with, a, like, a bunch of uh, raw HP attached to it, would actually be pretty good, so... I don't think that's actually the low roll. It might literally be uh, Abandoned Wedding Ring. So maybe I've already experienced the worst that this has to offer. 
Because then you have to rely on getting Glacier Breaker to actually be able to do damage in your run, and that is obviously not a good thing. Uh, we do want to kill these guys if I can. We're definitely not killing him. We will kill him, though. Alright, what do we got in this shot? Give me something nice, if you wouldn't mind. Mm, nope. For a second, I thought that might have uh, something good on it. No. Okay, none of this has anything on it. No. Oh, wait, why did I refresh one more time? That was a huge mistake. I just wasted a bunch of money. But we couldn't take any of this anyway. I'll take uh, money. Maybe I should... I don't know, man. Uh, I don't think item rooms are very good in this challenge run because you just... The odds of you getting an item that you can take out of these is so low that it almost feels like just taking money is better. But... I don't know, man. Uh, we haven't seen an item that we can take in a while, and I'm getting kind of desperate, so. If I saw the King Slime, what would I do? Would I delete everything except these two? Am I that crazy? Because if it duped any one of these items, I, they would be untakeable. Like, I wouldn't be able to actually pick them up, because then it would uh, double up an inscription I can't use. I don't know, man. That's a, that's a hell of a thought. That's pretty risky, too. Oh, we got our uh, legendary now. Please say this wasn't a skull room. Okay, it wasn't. Good. Perfect. Let's give me another chance to take that. If I want it. Which I don't think... I think we're still... Our, we're, this run's going to rely on its magic damage, not its physical damage. So any damage we can get in that department is good. Obviously, if we could take this, it would be good for the run. But we can't because it has dual on it. So we have to leave it on the ground. The game is taunting me. Um, hopefully the, uh, the adventures aren't next. I think the adventures is going to be a big, uh, test for this run as they are a lot of runs, but, uh, I'm not feeling super confident about my odds against them and they're not next. Thankfully we have another room to get more powerful. Uh, what are some good items that we could even find moving forward? Pain and despair, I think has, um, Hidden Blade on it. But it also has Rapidity on it, I think. But we don't have a Rapidity item, so we could take it if we saw it. We're still doing good in rooms, but uh, our damage is about to fall off a cliff. Like, it's, the further you get into the game, the more uh, HP the enemies get, so... Oh, why am I taking damage? Uh, we're gonna leave the Halfling NPC on the ground. Man, I'm, uh... Really hoping we find some items soon that we are able to use. It's just been way too long. If only we could make this heritage-based run, you know, and actually make King Dwarf, like, really good. Okay, let's just... While we have Misfortune activated, I'm just going to absolutely go buck wild with our damage here. This is also a really nasty set of adventures, too. But there really is no good set of adventures in this uh, part of the game. They're all, in one way or another, really, really annoying to deal with. But I don't, I don't like the warrior and uh, a, a high damage uh, adventurer combo. Because he's just he's so annoying and able to uh, protect them so easily. But as you can see here, we're already starting to run into a bit of a damage issue. Uh, in most runs, I would already be way, way, way past this. And have dealt with them very easily. But I, I don't know. I still think we're profoundly fortunate on this challenge run to have gotten the uh, the start we did. And none of this is useful. Literally none of it, so we'll just take the money. Come on, game. Oh, at least we have Legendary now, so that's a pretty significant power increase. Though I do feel like we're relying on our swaps a lot. But I also think we got some of the better abilities that we could have gotten with these, uh, with this skull here. Also, I shouldn't have done that because it activated my uh, my misfortune, which means less use time of it in the actual room where it will, will help me. But I just wanted to test my damage a bit there. The bleed is actually doing quite a bit of work too, so we should give credit where it's due. The sword was pretty lucky too to have a skull with a natural uh, a secondary damage source attached to it. Though I would have obviously wanted Werewolf, but that's, you know, whatever. We'll, we'll take a, still a good roll. Like, Gravedigger would be bad. Um, 
at least on a uh, invisible knife run. There's not much you can do with it. And that's not takeable. That's really sad because uh, I've been wanting to use this item on a run for so long. One day, dude, one day we'll get to use it, but not today. God, I just, it never shows up when it's actually beneficial for me. We'll go ahead and summon our king turret here. I'm going to be high rolling as much as, or uh, farming as much as possible when it comes to uh, trying to get money. So I'm going to activate these guys too. Because from here on out, it's all about the money. Uh, we have no more skull shards that we have to focus on. It's all about refreshing uh, shops and trying to get the uh, items that we want. And even though I don't know exactly what items I want, surely the god one's going to pop up in a shop soon that's going to be useful for me. But look how few items we have right now. It's kind of crazy. But uh, like, like I said, uh, Invisible Knife is just absolutely carrying this run. I knew it would too. Uh, it's just such a powerful item to have. All right. This is the item I was talking about, by the way, that I thought might be the... It, it has revenge on it, too, so this is definitely not not the low roll at all. This is a fairly good roll. If you're talking the... Uh, oh! Hidden Blade and Rapidity? That's perfect. That's perfect. That's Hidden Blade 4, right? It is. Okay, awesome, awesome. Okay, we're, we're definitely somewhere now. Oh, God, I'm being offered the troll. But we don't need it, right? Wait, that's Explosive Arrow. Oh, it has... I could get rid of a Misfortune item if I wanted, but I don't want to. But now we have Misfortune 5, which is pretty useless, but we do have uh, some damage going here. We're now getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere with our damage. Uh, the the Thieves' Armor's uh, projectiles are pretty much where it's going to be at. Oh, oh, and if they do work with King Dwarf. It works with King Dwarf. Okay, that's perfect. That's so good. Okay, we're definitely getting somewhere with this run now, dude. Okay, we're off to the races now, I think. Uh, or not off to the races, but we're at least off to something. The cooldown on um, on Explosive Arrow is a little jank, but that's fine. That's that's all well and good. Now we can't take Brawl, but that's fine. I, I can't even think of another item that has Brawl on it. That we could take. Obviously, I can think of Brawl items like Doomsday and um, the, uh, the Spirit, the Dark Spirit. But I can't think of a Brawl item that has Hidden Blade on it or anything like that. I want to summon my King Dwarf, thank you. For some reason, I didn't think um, item effects worked on quintessences. I uh, don't know where I got that. I've, I was very certain about that, though, but I'm very glad that I'm wrong. Because uh, that's going to help the run immensely. Thank you. Uh, man, I wish I was offered more money rooms. Money rooms are where it's at, man. Like, moving forward. That's pretty much going to be exclusively what I want to take at every time I'm offered it, but uh, it's just not happening. We're getting a lot of uh, item rooms, and the odds are, like I said, uh, once we get out of one of these rooms, we're probably not going to be able to take what we're offered, but maybe we'll get profoundly lucky. But honestly, I think we're almost at max power. Like, we got pretty much everything I could have wanted. Can't take that. A pain and despair I would take, but I think it has rapidity on it, and that would mean I would have to get rid of the black steel daggers, which not happening. So this might be all the items we're taking, and I'm very confident in my um, in my king dwarf take now because of how it worked with explosive arrow. I don't think troll would even be that good because troll is pretty like what is our we have to see what our crit rate is once we're maxed out with our. Uh, with our attacks here but i think uh we're almost at full like constant crits regardless so yeah 80 percent troll would just up that by 20 percent oh wow what a sick take god i wish we had troll quint instead of uh king dwarf yeah no <laughs> king dwarf is great on this run thank god that we got the uh, explosive arrow Otherwise, King Dwarf would actually be maybe worth getting rid of in favor of uh, Troll. Though, even then, it's a little hard to say. I think I... No, okay, I pointed that the right way. Man, dude, we are actually uh, doing more damage than I thought I would be to this Chimera. Oh, God, get me out of here, please. Thank you. This is going very well. And she is dead. 
So we did, she didn't even get to her second jump in the air attack, which normally is like normally I would consider this low damage, but obviously the circumstances of this run make this pretty uh, pretty good actually. So yeah, that went very well, and we're only at seven items. So and I don't know if we're gonna get more than this. If only we could get strike, but the rules are the rules. Our crit damage is pretty good though. What is an item I would take? I would maybe want to take um, Bone of Swiftness. Oh wait, no, I can't take Bone of Swiftness because it has bone on it, Never mind. I was thinking the basic attack boost would help me, but for some reason, I guess I forgot the rules of the fucking challenge for a second. This is definitely where the run's gonna be put to the test. Uh, our low damage is gonna be a huge problem, but uh, hopefully it's not, you know, hopefully we're able to fight through it. I do feel pretty confident. At least for the first half of uh, Act 2. If we get like the uh, the Mage Adventure, that could be bad. Because how do we even hit her? Though I guess that's a struggle everyone has to overcome. Uh, thankfully there's a Fountain here. So none of the damage, or none of the debuffs I took there even mattered. Okay, we'll definitely take the Money Room. Had to think about it for just a moment. What? I'm trying to think of items that I could take moving forward. It's starting to get tight though because we have so many different uh, inscription effects on this run that uh, we're going to run into some overlap issues where like I see an item that I want but I can't take it because it has an inscription on it that I'm not building towards. So who knows? Uh, the run is going to get challenging from here. It's, we might not be able to get any more items than this. I definitely would not at this point delete all of my items to uh, make the king, uh, the king slime dupe better. We just have to pray that we get like invisible knife or uh, thieves armor from that. But the odds of that happening, I would say, are fairly low. But then again, we might not even see king slime, so it might not even matter. There's the shop. That's not good. Uh, that just means we low rolled our rooms, which is unfortunate. Can't take this. None of this, I don't think, would have any of the stuff we want. What about this? Also, there is Glacier Breaker. If only I saw this on the last run. It has Strike on it. And also, we're not a Speed Skull regardless, so we would only get 10% or 15% in crit increase. So, pretty useless. This has Hidden Blade on it, but sadly, it has Poison on it. <laughs> God damn it. The amplification from this would be really good. Yeah, we'll just counter losses and move forward. So, yeah. Uh, this could very well end up being a 7-item run. Just depending on the RNG from here. But I'm not as familiar with uh, item inscriptions as I should be. Which is one of the reasons I'm not ready to do a uh, tier list for items yet. Because I'm just not familiar enough with them. I couldn't tell you uh, all the different items. I, I haven't even come close to using all of them yet. Or, okay, I've probably come close, but, you know. That was just to bring the point home that I'm not prepared yet for uh, doing that yet. Also, I kind of want to do a quintessence tier list first. And also, um, I've been thinking about doing a beginner skull tips video for people. Because um, I feel like I would be able to inform a lot of people on strategies they haven't thought about yet. I do have a thousand hours or almost 1100 or yeah, 1100 hours in this game. So um, I'm very experienced more experienced than most people you'll talk to and I know a lot of things that a lot of people for some reason haven't come to understand yet especially about quintessences which is uh, why I said I want to do a quintessence tier list but uh, I think a, a beginner tips video might be a little bit better also let's just skip this shit <laughs> fuck this if you've never seen this skip this is probably gonna blow your mind but you can skip these rooms that you do it in speed runs. Uh, I don't normally do this in normal runs, but I'm just worried about the health of the run, so I'm actually just gonna do it. I don't think there's enough gold to be made doing those normally to uh, actually justify it, but yeah. If you have a little bone, you can, you can, I think you can do it with Werewolf too, and maybe a few other skulls. I know Gargle can skip some of it, but yeah, you can skip uh, some of those entryways by not going into them and summoning the enemies. 
I do have an entire... This is like old hacks of content, like before I started using my voice in videos, but um, I do have a skips video that is uh, pretty fancy. If you want to go watch my skull skips video, that is like a video I fucking poured my heart and soul into back in like 2021. Dude, I, I nearly killed myself making that video just because how much editing is in it. You should have to go and watch it and see for yourself. Uh, that that video was cr so hard to do. <laughs> it would be um, way, way, way in the back of my catalog. So go look, please. <laughs> please, man, please. I put so much work into it. Please, I'm begging you. Though I, I'm way past it at this point. So I much prefer uh, doing these style of videos. Shocker, I know, but um, it's it's more fun for me. I have a lot more fun uh, talking my thoughts out on camera. Do I even want to do this? I don't think I do. I think I'll open until one bad effect happens and then I'm out of here. Because whatever there's the odds of me getting an item I can use from this and want to use uh, is low. So let's just get out of here. I'll open because you guys know me. I, I, I fucking can't help myself. I'm going to open one on the way out. Okay, I was about to fucking say it. But of course, it was the troll. Get the fuck out of my face. Freaking devs are so rude with that shit, dude. It's so rude. We only lost a, what, 25 HP, which is not good, but we can we can manage it, you know? Thankfully, I knew when to stop there, because if we had lost a lot of HP, we might die here, depending on who this is. No warrior, no mage. Okay, well, that's my nemesis. Can't say I'm a fan of this guy, but uh, uh, at least he's not the major, the warrior. But he's he's not. A, I don't think this guy's a walk in the park by any stretch. Mostly because I'm just not familiar enough with his attack patterns. Because he, if if you're a new player to this uh, game, he was missing from the from the uh, the pool of Act Four adventures that you could find for a very very long time before the uh, 1.4 update came out, and the devs took like a year break and. Um, in updates he was just he was fucking gone bro him and the mage both so uh glad to have them back even though we hate the mage the game is certainly better now that we can actually fight her here it kind of sucked that they were gone for so long but we, we we are no mage fans here to say the least this is such a scary fight dude i'm trying to keep my distance as much as possible thank god king dwarf exists dude just, we're going to rely on it very heavily here. I just don't like getting close to him. He's, uh, he's very scary. Uh, I really want him to ult soon. The longer this fight goes on, the worse it is for me. Okay, that is not an ult, sir. If we cooperate, that would be nice. Okay, here comes the ult. The ult's easy to dodge. Like, the ult is nothing. This is a very uh, easy rhythm that you can take to avoid taking damage from it. Okay, just stay over there if you wouldn't mind. Let's see if we can allure him over here. Good. Alright, good. King Dwarf, do your thing. Lure him away. Wait, I did not mean to do that. Fuck. Don't hurt me. Okay, we are, we've we taken quite a bit from this guy, but I always take a lot from this guy. He's such a jerk. This is why I don't like fighting him. Like, his, his patterns are very, um, very rude. Okay, please don't kill me. We're probably going to die here. Ah, there it is. Okay, this is bad. That that was very bad. That's on me completely for taking my sweet time getting out of that fight. That's bad for the run. We could very well lose from here. Damn it. Losing our life against the, the adventurer there is not good. But, like, our damage is catching up to us at this point. This is the point in the run where uh, if you're low damage, uh, you're going to be in a lot of pain. Well, we'll have to see what happens. But, um... Yeah, I, I'm uh, not feeling it as hard as I was before. Really, I think uh, 
the best uh, adventure options there for us would have been, uh, crazily enough, the archer and the uh, obviously the ninja because the ninja is the ninja. But the archer would have been a very good option for us there, which most people really don't like the archer, and I don't either. But she uh, she wouldn't have been able to deal with us very easily. Whereas he can just jump all over the place and he's very unpredictable. Okay, let's try and deal with this bozo as quickly as possible. Please, sir. You could just die. That would be excellent. Thank you. Man, if only I had gotten out of there with my life, I would be fighting for it now, but at least we would have it. Uh, Joan could be very scary for this run. I don't even know if we're going to get past her. I have to see how things go have to play very 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 well from here on out i'm going focus mode here dude i want this win so bad i want to win my first challenge run with this uh challenge especially because we high rolled so well getting the uh ooh, the invisible knife it's time to go absolute go mode absolute pro mode sweat lord extreme it's happening i'm focused up like crazy right now Hopefully uh, the shop coming up gives us some good tools, but like I said, I'm not really uh, expecting to get anything else in terms of items for this run. I think we're we're about as strong as we're going to get. And I said that, I think, like at the start of Act 3, and we really haven't gotten much stronger since then, so I called it then, and uh, yeah, uh, it's pretty much how the run's gonna go. Though we did get explosive arrow, I suppose. So that's one thing that we got since I said that. But that's about it. Okay, so that's King Slime, I think. I can't tell. Is it? No, it's the Halfling. Which will free her. Because there's no guarantee we're gonna see her again. Damn it, King Slime. Not that the odds are that he would give me an item I could use are very low. Okay, so we can use all of this shop to refresh for items. Let's see what we get. None of this. This is not good for me, right? Yeah, that's completely useless, sadly. Okay. Masterpiece Misfortune. We can take that. Yeah, we can take that. There we go. There's an item we can use. Perfect. Uh, that's good. That's damage. That's raw damage, which is something we definitely need. Um, not useful. What do we got here? None of that's useful. That's not useful. This is not useful. One more, I think. That has strike on it, unfortunately. Fuck. Damn, shit. What is my other strike item? This? I don't think so. I think this is better for me. And we can't refresh again, so we did get a little stronger here. We got this. But is it enough to save the run? I don't know. What do I take here? Act 5 shop is brutal, regardless. So the odds of us being able to afford an item when we get to the Act 5 shop are really low. But the thing is, I want to have the, the possibility to do it. So I'm tempted to take an item room here. Like, what would I even take from a from a from an item room? Is the question. And I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Pain and despair, I think, is past the point of uh, usability. I don't even know what it might have rapidity on it, but we already have rapidity on this. So, oh Jesus, please don't. <laughs> okay, maybe I shouldn't be swapping the little bone, like. I think it might just be bad. Or at least, like, right now it's bad. Like, the further you get into the game, the the, the worse that the uh, the little bone swap becomes to the point to where it becomes pretty bad for you. Uh, because it makes you so vulnerable. So let's try and group all these enemies together. Okay, there I go swapping again. <laughs> I can't help myself, man. I need to go into absolute giga tryhard extreme mode here. If I want this win, and I, I do want this win, I want it so badly. Just take it slow, take it steady. I'm used to not, I'm not used to taking things slow and steady in Skull because I'm just, like I'm so uh, used to this game and like going quickly and uh, understanding it very uh, 
on like a deep level that I most of the time don't have to go slow, but here I do, so let's just do that. Stop taking unnecessary damage. Preserve all the HP we can. Oh, these guys are such pains, but with this guy running, like this is, this is such a nasty room. Okay, we could change our abilities if we wanted to, but I'm pretty happy with my abilities, so I think we're gonna let her stay in there. Why did I swap? I don't know. Just force of habit. Maybe I should free her just so she, no, she can't show up again, so it's fine. And we get to take an item room regardless. Man, this video is going to be long, huh? Okay, so this is a, a fortunate room because we don't actually have to kill anything. We just run away. Or at least at the start, you know, like we don't actually have to fire our way through waves of enemies. We can just let them blow up. And that's what we're going to do. Though we are getting a lot of these tentacle arms, it's becoming a bit of an issue. Oh, look at that guy on the ground. Whenever that happens, by the way, if you're like a new player and you're worried about it, uh, you don't actually have to kill them. They don't count towards the room clear if they go into the ground like that. So don't worry about it if it happens to you. You don't get soft locked. It's just, uh, I guess, a, th a, a thing that the devs planned for when they saw it happening and were like, okay, well, if that happens, uh, then we just won't force the player to kill them. Would be nice to kill him, though, because he might drop an HP orb, but... We'll be fine. We're actually still doing pretty good damage, all things considered. <laughs> Let me look at our raw numbers. They're terrible. So, for us to be doing this much damage to enemies is still... Like, it's usable. You know what? Maybe I should farm some HP orbs off these guys. Give me some HP orbs, man. One more. I'm not going to stick here forever. Or I might edit it out. Uh, we're not going to kill him even if we keep attacking him. So let's just get him low. There we go. We got one. We got one. We got a little bit more HP than we would have had if I hadn't done that. So That's like the power of farming in Skull the Hero Slayer. It very rarely comes into play. But this is one of the best rooms to do it. So if you ever want to farm and you need like a little extra Kyrian procs or like, you know... You want your Grim Reaper to be a little bit stronger. This is like one of the rooms you can do it in back there. Not this room. This room is not good for it, but... I would say one of the hardest aspects of this run is going to be uh, Joan Phase 1. Because we can't bleed her. And our bleed damage is actually accounting for a shocking amount of our damage here. You would be, sh you would be very surprised. So... Okay, that was bad. But I don't think there was any getting around that. Oh yeah, those are traps, actually. Let's leave that there. Uh, if you weren't aware, you don't actually have to kill those things. They are traps. They uh, don't actually count towards the uh, the total enemy count in the room. And I'll show that here. I already demonstrated it in another previous video. But I'll do it again here just to show how consistent it is. Wait, am I wrong? Is it... Like, that's weird. Maybe it's only when they spawn in. Or oh, when they're naturally in the room. And when they spawn in, they count as enemies. What the hell? That's so weird. <laughs> well, I guess I'm wrong then. <laughs> I don't know, man. I showed it off in another video, but that one started out in the room. And that one spawns in when you walk up past one of the invisible barriers. So yeah, this room. This is the room where you don't... Like, you don't have to kill this one. That's so weird. I guess I'll show that here. Just to show I'm not making it up. Shit, I took unnecessary damage there so this this is a room where i have a feeling we're going to take a lot of unnecessary damage this is a really tough room okay we're going to have to go kill this archer but then we have to get through this guy while we do it okay let me swap please uh we took a lot there this is very unfortunate and now we have to kill one of the orb guys here he is thank you for coming to me Let's get the hell out of here. Give me some HP orbs, man. Man, we are taking a lot. So much lag.
Wait, he's still alive? Good lord. Okay, there we go. We got rid of some of these guys, so maybe the lag will be reduced. And he just comes out of absolutely nowhere off the screen. Oh, don't hurt me. We're going to need as much HP as we can get to uh, win this run. And honestly, I'm not sure this is enough. What a rough room. I think this guy's still alive over here. Yeah, see, he's still alive. So I wasn't I wasn't just completely making it up. Uh, like I said, I think it might have to do with if they're already in the room when you start it. But... Yeah, I don't know. It's very weird how Skull the Hero Slayer defines an enemy that you have to kill and uh, an enemy you don't have to kill. And we can't take that. So I guess this is our kit for the run. I might as well go ahead and screenshot it because I'm not sure we're making it out of this room, out of this fight alive. <laughs> this is uh, going to be really, really hard. So let's give it our best shot, but uh, I'm not convinced it's going to be possible. All right. So uh, I have to give uh, big props to itemless uh, champions, people who won their runs without items, because you guys, um, you're uh, you you did something crazy. I'm now starting to see just how uh, how hard that can be because uh, you know the run restrictions we have on this run are pretty intense, but I don't know if they're as intense as uh, itemless. So I uh, I do have a lot of, a lot of respect for that. It's because uh, I would say one thing that this has over uh, itemless runs that's harder is you have to keep your skull that you get from the uh, from the common, the guy in the uh, at the start. But um, and and itemless runners don't have to do that. But you guys have to do this all without items, so that just shows like your profound knowledge over uh, dodging every single wave of uh, attacks in this game. We're doing good so far, though. We haven't taken any damage. Though I should knock on wood. I don't want to jinx myself here. Uh, we're getting some nasty attack patterns. This is so nasty. We're probably going to take damage here in one way or another. Uh, no, we actually didn't. But we didn't really deal any damage either. So We, we didn't take damage, but we, we gained nothing. So we have to get out of this fight very quickly from here. Uh we want any chance of actually standing a chance against Joan phase two we just we, we can't lose our uh, our HP too much this is a uh, I should be going Omega try hard here I should not be talking which I might have to start doing I just want to at least ensure that we can make it to the first hero at the very least for this run that would be a victory in my eyes Though, obviously, I want the, the full victory, but, um... Yeah, okay, that's really bad. Oh my god, I wasn't paying attention to her animations. Okay, that is so, so, so bad. I have to do so well against her face, too. Man, that sucks. Okay, that's not good either. Ooh, baby. Okay, let's not walk in the center anymore. That is just not smart. Here she comes. Okay, she... I thought she was spawning um, the, the waves, but she was spawning the tentacles. Okay, this is bad. We're pretty much fucked, honestly. Oh, that went so badly. It was going so well at first. She just started being so nasty, and I made a big mistake there. Okay, let's just play it safe. Play it cool. Play it safe. We can, we can uh, make her bleed now, which is good. Okay, what is she doing? That's... A uh, very easy attack to dodge, so thank you, Joan. That is not an easy attack to dodge. Just keep just keep being nice, Joan. Play nice, man. That's all I'm asking. We've only taken 5 HP since this uh, fight began. She's going to summon the orbs, I think? Yeah. Stupid accidental damage. Okay, that's also not playing nice, Joan. Gotta be careful with her. Uh, with her. Okay, dude, I gotta stop taking stupid damage like that. Okay, this is bad. Ah! 
Okay, we gotta kill this guy, I think. He's gonna kill me if I let him just sit here and keep doing that. Please die, sir. She's summoning her orbs. What? Oh my god. Well, there you have it. What even killed me there? Normally the cause of death at least gives you something. Did I get hit by this? I think I got hit by that. God damn it. Dude, we were so close. At least getting to the first hero. If only I hadn't died against the adventurer, then... Man. Well, that's the challenge run for you. Um, very difficult. Very limiting with how you can build your run. We'll definitely come back to it. Uh, I'm not... See, I, I know we got lucky with the start, but maybe if I got arms or artifact, it would be even easier. But I don't want it to be easy. I want it to be hard. So I'm very glad that this was like the uh, first attempt at the uh, challenge run. But it just wasn't meant to be. It's so hard, dude. It's so hard. <laughs> like I said, massive respect to uh, itemless runners. Y'all are, uh, y'all are crazy. Uh, this shit is not easy. Uh, but I mean, like I said, I, I really fucked up against the rookie. I uh, just took stupid damage against Joan. If we hadn't gotten caught in that wave in the middle of the fight, I think we would have been fine. But uh, it is what it is. You know? Skull the Hero Slayer is a cruel game. And uh, it rears its fangs, especially when you purposefully put limits on yourself. And this is what we did in this round. And we got what we, we, got what we asked for. So... Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you did and you made it to the end, uh, thank you. Uh, we'll definitely we'll get there in another video. Uh, it'll have you know we'll get we'll get the win on this uh, on this challenge run. This was my first attempt. I have lots of challenge run ideas that I want to do moving coming up on the channel. Um, especially a harpy challenge. I definitely want to do a harpy challenge. Uh, I did it off screen, so I want to prove that I can do it on screen too. That's coming up. The uh, the shop item challenge is going to be coming up too. That one might even be... No, nah, that one will be harder. Though maybe I should set a restriction with skulls too on that one. It might be too easy if I can choose whatever skull I want. Uh, anyway though, thank you for watching. I appreciate you and I'll see you again in the next one.